The move to normalize relations between Cuba and the United States is not without hurdles. Cubans are demanding the return of land currently occupied by the Guantanamo Bay Naval Station. How did the U.S. end up on Cuban soil in the first place? Hello, I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C., and this is The Heat. About $4,000, that's the annual rent the United States pays Cuba to lease the land housing the Guantanamo Bay Naval Base. The U.S. prison at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba has been the subject of fierce debates since it opened in the aftermath of the 9-11 terrorist attacks in 2001. But the controversial naval station has been hotly contested longer than that, more than 100 years longer. The U.S. holds a permanent lease and Cuba wants it to end. Coming up, we'll speak to a historian who explains just how the U.S. ended up on Cuban soil. But first, for the view from Havana, we're joined now by CCTV's Michael Voss. And Michael, Cuban officials recently, including the foreign minister, the vice president, they've spoken openly about the need to return Guantanamo to Cuba. How important is that call in the rebuilding of U.S.-Cuba ties? Anna, this call for the return of the Guantanamo naval base is something that, that's really been pushed ever since Fidel Castro came to power back in 1959. Um, they consider the, that they signed this lease under duress, that it's an illegal occupation. You've mentioned the $4,000 a year fee for the lease. Well, Cuba has never cashed that check. I, I believe once one was cashed by mistake, but in the last 54 years, um, they've all those checks have built up and are locked away in a cupboard. Fidel Castro cut off the uh, water supply to, to, to the base in 64, and there, aren't, there used to be a lot of Cubans working daily inside the base. There are none anymore. But in terms of going forward with U.S.-Cuba relations, I don't think this is a short-term game-changer. If within the next couple of years the base remains in U.S. hands, it hasn't been returned, I don't think we're going to see a, a major upset or, a, or, or an effect on the, the current detente and, and, and rapprochement that is going on. Cuba has other much more important short-term priorities, particularly to get Congress to, to repeal the, the U.S. trade embargoes. That really is the, the focus of what the, the biggest change, the most immediate change that they need at the time. But when the foreign minister, Bruno Rodriguez, made that historic trip to Washington on July the 20th to reopen the embassy there, he described the uh, restoration of diplomatic relations as the first step on a long road towards normal relations, and that does include the return of the Guantanamo naval base. The historic events we are living today would only make sense with the removal of the economic, commercial, and financial blockade, which causes so much deprivation and damage to our people. The return of occupied territory in Guantanamo and respect for the sovereignty of Cuba. Right, Michael, and when we talk about the U.S. Naval Station at Guantanamo Bay, we're talking about the detention center, the Guantanamo prison. What is the Cuban view on the detention of foreign nationals on Cuban soil? Well, immediately after 9-11, Cuba almost bent over backwards to try and assist the United States. And my understanding is that in those very early days, it was allowing U.S. planes to fly over Cuban airspace to land at the base. But that obviously has changed in many ways. The, the, the continuation of this prison in Guantanamo Bay has handed Cuba a propaganda tool, um, a means of, if you like, countering U.S. attacks. The, Cuba often is criticized for its human rights record and its treatment of prisoners. Uh, the, the official government response is that the only place in Cuba where prisoners are tortured is in the American-held base at Guantanamo Bay. So, I mean, I think most of the world is highly critical of that prison and of the treatment of the prisoners that are there, and, and, and Cuba certainly um, is part of that. And how do Cubans feel about the U.S. base being on Cuban soil? Do they see it as so-called, I guess, occupied territory? They do, but it's not a major issue amongst ordinary Cubans on the street. When I've talked to people about the development of U.S. relations, this new detente, this new return to diplomatic relations, 
What most concerns Cubans is the end of the US trade embargo. That, that is really the biggest concern. People here are hoping that, that now that they have these new relations with the United States, that this will help improve the economy. Certainly, they do believe that it, 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 it is occupied land. That, that, that is certainly the view here. They would like to get it back. Um, it's completely enclosed. You can't get near it from here. You can drive relatively close to, 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 to the bay, but it's blocked off. It's now an enclosed military area. Um, there used to be a vantage point where you could climb up on a platform and with binoculars actually see that. That's been closed for several years now. Um, you cannot get near it. Cubans can't see it. You hear very little about it. Really, the big issue here for most Cubans remains the U.S. trade embargo. Thanks, Michael. That's CCTV's Michael Voss reporting from Havana.